Hey, what's up guys, Bo HD here, and this is the TCL 20 Pro 5G, and it's one of the hottest new 5G phones for the price. It's 500 bucks, or roughly half the cost of the newest 5G iPhones, and a few hundred bucks cheaper than some of the, the leading Android flagships on the market. But what I found upon first impressions is that this phone doesn't have a whole lot of compromises to get the price down. In fact, there might be even more features than what we see from the phones from Samsung and Google these days. So let's take a look at what's inside the box. The most interesting thing about this packaging is that it's printed in landscape orientation. Otherwise, it's extremely minimal, kind of matches the, the trend these days of minimal packaging. Lifting off the top of the box, we'll find the TCL 20 Pro 5G sitting right on top. Underneath, there is a packet containing some paperwork, a clear plastic case, and a SIM card ejector tool. Last but not least, we have an 18 watt wall charger and a USB-C cable. Now, I think this is one of the most strikingly beautiful phones I've laid eyes on in quite some time. I'm really a fan of this marine blue color and the dual tone appearance on the back. We have this frosted glass and a sliver of glossy glass that picks up some fingerprints, sure, but it creates a, a really stylish dual tone look. If you want something a bit more stealthy though, you can go with the moon dust gray model, but I'm definitely a fan of this blue option. From a hardware standpoint, I think you get everything and maybe a little bit more than what you'd find in a phone twice as expensive. For example, there is a headphone jack up top, which you don't see much these days. And you'll also see there's an IR blaster to control your TV set. TCL is pretty well known for their TVs, so it kind of makes sense they'd include a sensor in their phones to control their TVs. And they did. We also have a SIM card tray with support for a micro SD card slot for expandable storage up to one terabyte. Another feature Samsung has cut from their flagships, and this would expand upon the 256 gigabytes of onboard storage. So you could really max this thing out. But while we're still talking about the hardware, I wanna mention another surprise feature for this price range, wireless charging. Fast wireless charging up to 15 watts. This is a little bit of a deal breaker feature when phones don't have wireless charging because I've retrofitted my whole house with wireless charging pads. So I'm really happy to see that this phone, the 20 Pro features wireless charging. Other than that, uh, TCL did a pretty good job with their attention to detail. You have a programmable smart key that is textured. Uh, more on that later. The power button has this sliver of red to help you differentiate it from the other buttons on this phone. Also, the camera modules don't protrude from the rear of the phone, so it's not gonna rock around on a desk or a flat surface. And the way they're stacked alongside the elongated rectangular flash modules, I think it just looks really, really clean. Now, one polarizing feature that this phone has is a 6.67 inch AMOLED curved display. The display, you know, upon first impressions, it gets fairly bright and it has a retina pleasing 395 pixel per inch index. It even supports HDR10, all very good things, but the edges are curved, making it a little bit harder to hold the phone without dropping it and resulting in some accidental touches on the display. We're just gonna have to, you know, see how much this bothers me in my full review. I just know a lot of people, you know, from reading the comments, they don't like these curved edges for these reasons. Even if it makes the phone look more premium, some people would just uh, rather not have them at all and just opt in for a traditional flat panel. Along with this display, we have an in-display fingerprint scanner. Add that to the list of features you can expect to find in a flagship smartphone. And powering this device is the Qualcomm Snapdragon 750G 5G chipset with six gigabytes of RAM and a whopping 256 gigabytes of onboard storage that, as I mentioned earlier, is also expandable. You do get a fairly heavy TCL UI on top of Android 11, which is gonna put off a lot of Android purists out there, which I generally fall into that category. But there are some pretty unique features that aren't too bad to have here. Um, you can do a two finger swipe up to view some privacy apps. There's a bunch of ways to customize the app drawer, such as by usage, label, and icon color. Google Now is still a swipe away from your home screens, and there is an assortment of handy features available to toggle on and off in the quick settings. But I will say one of my favorite features this phone has has to be the smart key. This is a physical button on the left side of the phone that can be reprogrammed to open up an app or perform an action with a single press, a double press, and a long press. I think that is seriously an underrated feature I wish more phones would have. And it just adds to the functionality that you can customize to, to some degree with the power sleep button. 
Okay, now I think it's about time we talk about the cameras. Uh, typically, these mid-range phones tend to perform under par, but at the same time, they are usually packed with features to make up for the, the not so great image quality. We're obviously gonna have to you know, test this camera system out and see how it fares in my full review. But in terms of specs, we're working with a 48 megapixel f1.8 main camera sensor, a 16 megapixel f2.4 ultra wide, five megapixel f2.2 macro, and two megapixel f2.4 depth sensor for a total of four camera sensors. As I mentioned, the camera app is chocked full of features to take advantage of these sensors. There's even a pro mode to customize the camera settings if you desire that sort of control. Um, but again, I'm gonna have to really test this camera system out more before I comment on its capabilities. Okay, so there's a lot to like about this phone if you're a hardware guy like myself, but there's a, a small list of things that aren't so great. The biggest con is that it only supports T-Mobile's 5G network right now, although TCL has promised compatibility with low-band Verizon 5G. It's also only slated for two OS upgrades and only two years of security patches. So just something to keep in mind if you plan on you know, buying this phone and using it for the next handful of years. A couple other less severe cons, but I think still worth mentioning, is that there's no stereo speakers, only a downward-facing speaker that's nothing to write home about. And the display itself only supports 60 hertz, while some of the flagships feature 90 hertz and 120 hertz. But even with these cons, I think the price of $500 is not a whole lot to ask for. It's a beautiful phone, for whatever that is worth to you. And it has, it still has, a bunch of hardware features that we just don't see much in any phone these days, regardless of price. It's also available on Amazon, uh, which I'll place a link in the description to check out if you're interested. With that said, guys, if you have any more questions that I didn't address, feel free to let me know in the comments section and stay tuned for my full review. I'm Bo HD from Slash.TV. Thanks for watching. I'll see you right back here in the next one. See ya.